So first of all, uh, good morning, welcome. How are we? A little bit of life in the room, that's good. Um, uh, just a quick show of hands. How many of you caught Kevin's uh, uh, talk this morning and have switched your phones off from being online and not connecting to any Wi-Fi? Okay, um, this, is a, this is a slightly different perspective. We will touch on security, but this is very much around how pretty much every business uh, is looking at how they embrace digital transformation. So for those of you that I've not met before, uh, my name is Jay Zaykrig. I'm head of technology for partners at Microsoft in the UK. Uh, I pretty much spend every single day talking with partners and customers around how they adopt technology, but what it actually means for them. Not because it's the newest, greatest thing, but what it actually means for you as an individual, as a business, and certainly how we're actually changing industries uh, around the world. So we'll get started. Now, as I say, I speak quite a bit at different events, and I have the pleasure of listening to what we call futurologists, and they're fantastic. If you ever get to listen to them, uh, Tom Cheese writes uh, phenomenal with his book of the future, uh, and they talk about in 2014, 2050, and so on. I I'm not a futurologist. I'm, I'm a future realist, right? And I, what I will say is that the abundance of technology that we all have access to, and you hear about you know, robots are going to take over the world and so on, the only future that will exist is the future that every single one of us chooses to create, how we choose to embrace technology and how we choose to actually run uh, our businesses. And so when we look at the sort of uh, uh, digital disruption that's going on right now, we very quickly forget about the analog disruption that happened in the 1900s. Now, I'm, I'm a, what we call a mature person in our industry. I'm not this old. Uh, but this, this is from Manchester, and this is back in the 1900s, where there used to be people uh, that were called knocker-uppers. And they would actually go around, and uh, so that you wouldn't be late from work, they'd come around and they'd use a big stick, and they'd tap on your window, and they'd knock you up. Uh, clearly, this lady's exercising her right to use the pause button as she's grabbing hold of that uh, knocking uh, stick there. Uh, and the reason why this happened is that this new technology came out called the alarm clock. But it was so advanced, it was really, really expensive. It was also pretty unreliable. And so, you know, it took quite a while for alarm clocks to become, you know, cost-effective and reliable for people to use in their day-to-day -day lives. And when we look now as regards to disruption and we look at technology, then the cloud is kind of that technology that's now vastly affordable, incredibly reliable, and is actually shaping the future of many, many organizations. Now, when we look at the sort of technologies that are around, it's almost like an infinite array of possibilities of where we could use technology. And you start to listen to vendors talk about their technology passionately. And there's many here that will talk about the features of their product. But we have to change the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. We have to change the conversation and focus in not on what the technology is, but what the technology does. And this is something that uh, I learned from uh, listening to a story about how they bring uh, new people into Black & Decker. Uh, they bring them into the room. And they say, um, uh, welcome, uh, this is the start of your future. Uh, can anybody tell me what we sell? And a bright young person will put their hand up and say, yeah, we sell drills. And they'll go, no, we don't sell drills. And everybody's going, don't pick me, don't pick me. You know, what, what, what is it we sell, what is it we sell? And he goes, what we sell are holes. We sell bucket loads of holes. In fact, we've got an entire research and development team in an underground bunker in an undisclosed area that are thinking of new ways why our customers will want even more holes because that is the outcome, right? That is the only reason that you buy a technology called a drill, right? And I know this is really simplistic, but sometimes we forget the reason why we buy technology, right? It's for an outcome, right? Because the technology is moving incredibly fast. But the outcomes of what we want to achieve to be better engaged with our customers, to be more profitable, these are moving much slower. And it's the focus and asking the right questions to get to the what. And so when we talk about digital transformation, there are many, many areas that we could talk about. But we like to focus on four key areas. And this is not an academic exercise. This is something that we live and breathe at Microsoft as we go through our own uh, digital transformation. We think about how we better engage customers. And so if you've used our technology over the years and you've, you've sort of uh, tried to provide feedback, it's been challenging. Whereas now we give early access to our technology, sometimes previews that last over a year, so you can provide your direct feedback into that product. We have a whole bunch around the world of what we call Windows Insiders that help to shape uh, the product that is Windows 10 today. And we continue to use things like user voice and social media to better engage with our customers. 
so that we can move to the second area of transformation, which is transforming our products. There is no doubt that when we released Windows 8, we got a lot of feedback. It wasn't all great, right? But engaging our customers, getting that feedback, allowed us to transform the product, which is Windows 10, which, by the way, you know, when I was listening to um, the security talk this morning, a lot of the sort of attacks that were being mentioned, they have been mitigated with Windows 10. So if you're thinking about deploying Windows 10 in your business, just ask yourself one question. Why am I waiting to be more secure? Okay? And then have a look at what we've done with Windows 10. So we're transforming our product. And then when it comes to empowering employees, we're all mobile. You know, a gentleman here is on his phone. Uh, you know, people making no notes there on, on a notebook, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, you know, we're all kind of mobile working. So how do we actually empower people to have the right tools to get their jobs done? And then finally, how do we actually optimize every aspect of the way that I work as an individual, as the way the teams work, and how the entire organization works? Now, this shifting conversation around you know, what the technology actually enables means that we can focus on the impact that it has on businesses. And these are just, just some examples that I plucked out, the many, many examples around the world of where organizations are embracing things like the Internet of Things, machine learning, big data, all of those technologies. But for the reasons of these outcomes, reducing cost, increasing efficiency, providing much better uh, customer experience, because these are the things that truly matter. When I think about our vision at Microsoft that enables us to do this, it's very, very clear that you know, our, our vision of about empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more it's just brilliant, right? Everybody in our focus, the 110 plus thousand people are all focused on this clear vision of what we've got. When I woke up this morning in Manchester, I'm wondering, what am I gonna do today? I thought, hold on a minute. I know the answer to this. I'm gonna empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And do you know what? It feels good, ladies and gentlemen. It feels really good, right? It's not about selling licenses. It's about how do I actually empower you to achieve more, right? That's gotta be a good thing, right? And so when we look at how we do this, there are many, many things that we can do. But before we do that, we need to address, as Kevin mentioned before, the whole security thing, right? Uh, you know, this is a statement about the, uh, from the uh, FBI director. Uh, we saw many examples of how organizations could uh, have a data breach. We actually had one of our account technology specialists visiting a customer, and the customer was singing the praises about how amazing Microsoft technology is. And we're thinking, well, oh, thank you. Uh, and said, I particularly like your new self-healing Active Directory technology. And for those of you that don't know what Active Directory is, it pretty much controls the access to all the resources on your network. And the account technology specialist thought, hold on a minute, I don't, I, I don't think we have this technology. So he rang the office, hi, this is a new self-healing Active Directory technology. When did that come out? We go, well, we don't actually have that. It's a great idea, uh, but we, we don't have it. Maybe you should speak to the customer some more. So he spoke to the customer some more and advised that we do a security audit. Uh, and true enough, the customer had had a breach. Uh, hackers had gained access to the network, and they were trying to gain access to some key data. But because the Active Directory was in such a mess, they fixed the Active Directory first, <laughs> and then continued the attack, right? Now, we can laugh about it, because maybe it's not our network. Maybe it is. We don't know, right? But the point being is that you need to have a mindset that you will be breached, OK? It's almost an inevitability. There are some very, very smart people out there that want to gain access to your networks to see what data you have. The question is, what are you doing to protect all of your assets, right? What are you doing to detect should that happen? And then more importantly, what are you doing to feel empowered to be able to respond effectively? And this is kind of where we, we've been focusing. So when we think about the areas that we're uh, empowering people, we think about how we're making computing more personal. We think about how we're sort of bringing Windows to the broader set of devices. So whatever device you choose to use, you can have the best security and the best uh, user experience. I was joking earlier about the gentleman here making notes with his uh, pen uh, and pad, which is still a really great way of making notes because it's natural, right? But I still see a lot of organizations that when they turn up to meetings, they've got a whole wedge of printed paper. And you're probably spending a fortune on disk encryption making sure that the services that you're using in the cloud are encrypted as it goes across the wire. You're doing all the security thing, and then this is your fundamental mistake. You print stuff out just so that you can annotate it or just so that you can read it. As soon as you've printed it out, there's no security that's going to protect that information that is in black and white. 
So that's a challenge. And then when we turn up to meetings and we're making notes, we don't want to get our keyboard out. We don't want to be tapping away. We don't have a screen in front of us. It provides a bad experience. And so bringing ink to be a much more natural experience because unfortunately the gentleman who's making the notes out, which is brilliant, they will not be synchronized to the cloud right now. Uh, and should you lose that notebook on the way home, those, those notes would be lost. So how do we actually modernize the whole sort of uh, note taking? So we even look at how we bring new interactions with computing to make it more personal. Uh, you know, forget about the mouse and keyboard. They're, 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 they were what we did in the sort of 70s, 80s. It's how do we actually make much more immersive experiences. And so what you're seeing here is a combination of both pen and a new input device called a dial. Uh, so people that are in the creative sector can just become immersed in the creative experience. It allows you to, to work in a much more natural way. The ink just flows naturally. Uh, using the dial gives you that interaction as regards colors, shapes, whatever it happens to be. And this is not just the sort of uh, you know, art designers. We're seeing this for architects. We're seeing this for all manner of organizations. Even when I'm reviewing a document, I can spin the dial, and it spins through uh, the pages as I review that on this incredible uh, personal computing experience. So we're looking at how we completely remove those barriers as regards to the way uh, we work. But then we're also looking a little bit further, and there's a lot of interest in things like virtual reality. And there's a lot of organizations doing a lot of work with augmented reality. Uh, we've done quite a bit of work with what we call mixed reality. Uh, we have a technology that's called the HoloLens. It's a, a freestanding computing device that you wear on your head. You can see through it, so you're not actually hitting any kind of walls and so on. Uh, and let me give you a, a, an idea of how these different technologies stack up. So when we think about mixed reality, we think about the physical world. So here I've got an office, I've got my laptop there. And then when I actually look at uh, mixing this reality, I actually then overlay holograms in that physical space. And so we've been working on this for a while, so we can actually bring these holograms into your field of view, and you can work there. Now, when I actually move across to a virtual reality space, there's a challenge because we need to know who you are. We need to know where you are in that space. And then what we can do is we can remove the sort of physical world, and we can bring the virtual world in there. So we can blend across mixed reality and virtual realities. The other challenge is if you've ever wore a VR headset is the fear of walking into walls. So again, what we can do is we can map that out as well. So again, reducing that risk. By the way, if you're wondering, the, the dog is optional. I just want to for anybody who lives in an apartment that can't have pets, the dog is optional. Uh, and then when we think about you know, how people are applying this technology today, uh, one of our partners called Black Marble, we've got, a, you know, we've got about 24,000 partners in the UK, uh, and some of them are already building solutions. Uh, this is called TwoServe, and it's a solution that they've been building uh, to provide this mixed reality for the police force for doing crime scene investigation, to provide all that information that they need about a particular crime when they need it. And so you can see sort of examples here where you know, it, it actually scans the entire crime scheme and then brings that, that information to life, bringing contextual information there. Again, looking at how we transform the ways that people work uh, using the very latest technology. I mentioned before about using Windows 10 to secure uh, your business, to provide the safest place to work. We also then complement that with something called advanced threat protection. And this is constantly monitoring for where those attacks are and then providing guidance about how to respond. Understanding where the attack happened, on which device, what happened next, where were the IP addresses that those uh, malicious software tools were trying to access. All the things we saw from the exploits this morning, you now have the power to actually monitor and detect those things uh, so you can actually take the right appropriate action to secure your business. This is all part of a much broader story that we call the Secure uh, Productive Enterprise. Uh, there's loads of information about this online, uh, and I'm going to be around for the rest of the day, so please come and find me if you're interested in more of this. I'm going to switch very quickly now to looking at productivity. Uh, I mentioned before about how we enable every person to be more productive, uh, and this is a realization that everybody uh, here, as part of their day-to-day -day work, well, we're all creators, right? We're creating documents, proposals for clients, presentations, whatever it may be, right? We may even be app builders, we may even be technologists, whatever uh, that means. And so providing the right tools to empower you to actually build those line of business applications has been really challenging. And so recently we've been working on some uh, tools. Uh, this one's particularly is called Power Apps. It's kind of like the combination between Excel and PowerPoint to build line of business applications that you can rapidly uh, deploy to iOS, Android, and Windows devices. This really enables you to target specific business processes and provide rich uh, user experiences to make uh, your business more successful. 
And then on the behind the scenes aspect around the applications uh, talking to data and services, we introduced something called Flow. Uh, and this allows me to connect to the many different data sources that I use within my business, other data sources outside of my business, and automate the flow of information to make me far uh, more effective. Now, as traditional, uh, when you uh, speak at this event, it's always good to do a live demo. Uh, I, I just want to uh, uh, contend this with, it is a live demo, and um, everything could go wrong. Uh, it's okay, this is mainly for me to get into the zone. Uh, you can just be amused by it. Uh, so it's a very, very simple uh, demo. Uh, this is a demo of me uh, working on, on my uh, event today. And maybe I start off uh, making some notes in, in Word, uh, and I'm trying to uh, get this uh, uh, finally sorted out. What are the things I'm gonna say? And instead of printing this document out, uh, I'm gonna actually just work straight within Word and actually annotate it there. So I'm thinking this paragraph here, that, that's rubbish. So we can, just, we can just get rid of that. And as I would just annotate it on a piece of printed paper, I can just do that digitally. Uh, similarly, this is gonna be really important. So I wanna, I wanna highlight that and so I can just uh, make that bold. So select that uh, there and then just make that bold. Uh, and so very easy, I can use ink and uh, touch to actually better annotate and get my uh, script together uh, that I would wanna use. Uh, so I've got my script together, that's great. And now I'm, I'm, I'm at this event. And if, I don't know if you've seen uh, the ladies and gentlemen with the barcode scanners scanning you as you come around. Uh, I love those things, but they're quite expensive. Uh, and we've got a budget for this event, so we're gonna, we're gonna cut that budget down and we're gonna build an app. Uh, and so here what you're seeing is Power Apps. And I've quickly uh, created an app that, that's got a barcode scanner in there and it's gonna capture some information so I can get my leads uh, from my event. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly uh, run this app uh, and then uh, in the traditional demonstration style, I've got a barcode on here that I'm gonna use. Uh, here. So what should happen is that I will actually scan the barcode. Lights permitting, uh, there we go. And what's happened is it's not only recognized the barcode, but it's actually called into our cloud, the Azure services, and pulled that data in there. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is say, yeah, you're interested in Office 365, by the way, that's a great technology choice. Uh, and then just submit that lead. And then when I submit that lead, what happens is through the power of the internet, and did you see that bar chart just move dynamically right before your very eyes? Pretty impressive, I'd say. Uh, you're a tough crowd, by the way, that's impressive. Um, when I tell you that you know, I wrote a little bit of code as regards the looking up the database and so on for the application, uh, but everything else was managed by Flow. And so here I've got my Flow, and what I did is when I actually, from my Power App, I inserted that information into my Power BI, so you saw the chart data uh, change dynamically right there. I then inserted it, oh, did I mention I've got it integrated to dynamic CRM as well? Uh, so it's inserted directly into my CRM system, and it also notifies me back to say, oh, I've captured another lead. Uh, well done, James, you're rocking this stuff. And so if I go to my dynamic CRM solution, uh, that was uh, a person called Linda Sylvester, and so if I go and have a look at this and refresh my uh, dynamic CRM, try again. Go and have a look at my leads for my dynamic CRM. Uh, we'll actually see that that data has, in fact, uh, come straight into dynamic CRM as well. So I've been able to actually connect my Power BI live visualization so people will know that I'm working really hard at the Expo uh, at conference. It's also capturing leads and the context and injecting it straight to my CRM system. And that was just by you know, just building Power Apps and Flow together. So really, really powerful. And then as we know, these sessions are recorded. And what do I do once I've finished uh, the event? Uh, well, I've got video. And so now we're actually using our cloud technology, uh, our cognitive services to do facial recognition speaker recognition, topic extraction from what's being said. So here I can actually move to uh, when Satya is speaking. I can see the different points of when Satya is speaking. I can move to that exact point in the video and get to see where uh, Satya is, is speaking and he'll be speaking as part of the uh, keynotes here uh, with Adobe. Uh, so that's pretty good. Throughout the entire uh, video, I can see the sentiment analysis. So I can see that this is a very positive uh, message from Microsoft, so that's good. Uh, and then also, the other thing as well is that the entire uh, uh, script uh, can be transcribed because of the voice recognition technology that we have as well. So no longer is it dead content. We can use a number of these machine learning technologies that we have uh, to really bring that alive. So you know, from the point of actually creating content for your event to during the event to actual the media after it, uh, there are many, many services that can actually bring that information to life and transform the way that you work. So that was a, a quick demo of Flow and Power Apps coming together. 
We're also seeing the next generation. So instead of me going into my CRM system, what if my uh, personal assistant, my digital assistant, in this case Cortana, could intelligently help me, knowing that I've got a meeting uh, coming up, it can actually pull data from services like LinkedIn and say, oh, do you know you've got 37 other contacts in, in, uh, 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 that are related to Barbara? Oh, and by the way, I can bring you your next uh, uh, pipeline for the next three months from your CRM system without even going there. And because we're in an era of predictive analytics, we can even look at that data, look at the work you've been doing with that customer, and now my assistant can say, oh, by the way, I predict that these uh, opportunities are at risk. So now I'm getting intelligence ahead of time, predicting where there is risk, and even go a little bit further, and then I can ask, what do you think I should do, and provide me with guidance. And already, companies are building these intelligent, what we call bot technologies, to actually make it much more intuitive and interactive, almost like having a conversation rather than the traditional application model that we've been familiar with uh, in the past. Now, again, I talk about security. Even the productivity tools that we have, just as a matter of interest, how many of you are already using Office 365? Just, just raise your hands. Wow, fantastic. That's brilliant. Uh, for those of you that aren't, uh, please join us. It's great. Um, and for those of you that are, uh, one thing I would ask you to do is when you get back to the office or later today or, or even tomorrow, uh, type securescore.office.com as an administrator or ask your administrator to do this. And what it will do is it will give you almost like an Experian credit score, a score of your current security in your 365 tenants. One of the biggest challenges with security is visibility not knowing what additional things you can do to secure your data. We're trying to solve that problem by making it much more visible. So I can see that my current score is 113, but it's going to give me a bunch of actions that I can do to actually get up to 257. That means that I know and my business knows that we're doing everything we can to secure that data in Office 365. So really, really key. I mentioned a little bit about the uh, sort of intelligence. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, talk about artificial intelligence. We think that initially it's going to be assistive intelligence, intelligent systems that actually help us uh, get things done. Uh, we're seeing that by the use of voice, predictive analytics, and so on, uh, making a big uh, difference there. Uh, we're also seeing uh, the work that we're doing now. Uh, we just showcased our new uh, database technologies now called uh, SQL Server 2017. And what you're seeing here is you're seeing some uh, predictions here on uh, brain scans for this particular uh, patient. And that's actually been done by using SQL Server. Uh, and so what I'm able to do is to use the data that's in SQL Server and actually use open source technologies like Python and some of the libraries that are available in a language called R and actually do the prediction as regards the risk of cancer right there within the database. So not only am I querying for the data, but I can now query machine learning algorithms to actually assist me. And this is going to be available across all versions of SQL Server. And for those of you that work, again, with open source technology, uh, I want, one thing I do want to say is that um, for the first time, this release of SQL Server uh, is also being released on Linux as well as Windows as well. So whatever platform choices you've made in your organization, you can now embrace the very best in database technologies for performance, but also for advanced analytics and machine learning as well. And we're not, we're not done there, okay? We're doing more, right? Um, when we think about what we can do with machine learning, we've been spending uh, decades on uh, translation services and, and really building uh, fine models for doing uh, live translations. And so we, we tried to look at where we can take this. And so we've been building a new kind of hardware that we'll be able to, in the future, uh, deliver from our data centers that will actually have burnt into the actual uh, hardware our algorithms for various machine learning uh, uh, tasks. This one on screen at the moment is the task of translation and translating from English to Spanish. And this is taking something called Wikipedia. You may be familiar with it. It's got approximately 5.2 million articles and about 3.1 billion words. Imagine the power of this computing platform to be able to translate 3.1 billion words in 0 0.098 seconds. I right, just want you to think about the power of that, that computing and applying that to other algorithms that may be out there, such as product recommendations and other kind of things. This is kind of what we're enabling further down the line. So when I think about how we're enabling people to be more productive, we're enabling people to collaborate more effectively, we're bringing live translations in now, we're bringing the world of mixed reality and holograms, what might this look like in the future? So I'm going to close with one uh, video because um, I'm about to run out of time. Uh, this is something that our, our, our Windows team did. Uh, this scenario, by the way, just to paint the picture, this lady, she's about to design the next generation uh, footwear retail outlet. 
Uh, she, uh, for some reason, has chosen a, an abandoned barn, which is the first choice. But she has the HoloLens. And so what she's able to do is to scan that entire space and then project within it the store that she's been working on. And so because this is the HoloLens, she's not going to bump into anything. It actually does full uh, motion tracking, so I can actually move objects around. And just like in the physical world, if you're not happy with what you've done, then you can just throw stuff away, right? But nothing gets broken. Now, because you're throwing stuff away, your assistants realize you're a bit stressed. It's going, hey, Jane, I think you might be a bit stressed here. Could you do with some help? And you're thinking, yeah, I could do with some help. I'll tell you what, I'll go and get our team together. So we go out and we go and find Kevin. Now, Kevin's a gamer. Um, I think this is a bit unfair depiction, but we'll go with it. Uh, even though he's deeply immersed in his VR game, the assistant pops into the game and says, Kevin, we need your help. Uh, Jane's having a meltdown. He'll be there. I'll be there in a minute, right? Let me go over to uh, Ken. Ken thinks it's cool to wear the HoloLens in the office. It, it, it's not, by the way. Uh, it's really not a good idea. But what is cool is having a holoportation suite. So this is using 3D cameras that scans your entire body and then holoports you to another location. If you don't have a holoportation suite, that's fine. You just look a bit rubbish. That's fine. Okay. And so now I've got my team assembled, and the guys are going, well, what, what do you need? Well, I'm trying to build this shoe retail place. Look at it. And they're going, why did you choose a barn? We can't be creative here. We need something a little bit better. And so luckily, Windows 10 comes to the rescue. So we go, and there's our start menu. And we'll actually just move quickly into a virtual reality environment, where now we can be completely creative. And I look at my agents, and now my agents appear to me visually. And I need an agent that's wise and knowledgeable. And so you're clearly going to need an agent with a beard, so that's good. Uh, and so you get all these inspirational items that come and help you. And you're thinking, I want something fluid, something natural. This will do. Something with bamboo and water. And so I tell the team, look, this is what we're going for. This is, this, this is going to inspire us. And so now, even though these people are in different parts of the world, they appear in the same place. And almost like the modern digital equivalent of the A-team, for those of you that were around then, they just, just crack on, right? Uh, they create this new retail experience in their virtual uh, world. But then they can bring it back to mixed reality. They can even take colors from the physical world and drop that into the design. And like any project that you work on, the client arrives early. The client not only arrives early, but speaks Mandarin, but that's okay because we've got live translation. The client then puts the HoloLens on and joins you in your creative experience and sees the work that you've done and is blown away. Right? This is new collaborative working. This is how we're mixing uh, realities as regards virtual reality, mixed reality to make uh, things happen. I say this, we spend about $9 billion a year on R&D. And, and this, this, this for me just sort of shows what's going to be possible in the future. But wait, there's more. When it comes to the future of business, this is what we've all been waiting for. Boom, virtual fist bump right there. Uh, so you know, this is kind of where we're at. Uh, there's a lot that we're working on. I'm going to be around for most of the day. We don't really have time for uh, questions during the session. Uh, so I'm just going to finish by saying thank you very much for once again uh, joining us at IP Expo. Uh, please find me on Twitter. This is my email address. It's fully monitored by intelligent agents, or so they tell me. Uh, so please get in touch. I'd love to hear what you think about this and also how you're using Power Apps and other technologies. Have a fantastic day. Thank you very much. Thank you.